Hello, welcome everybody to this webinar about our archiving solution Retain. First, I will introduce my colleague Geert Lantinga. He will show. Yeah, good morning. <laughs> he will show us every important detail in Retain for Groupwise customers. Geert is our technical director and our birthday boy today. Geert, happy birthday! <laughs> Um, I believe everybody from you heard about the microfocus news about Guava. Let's have a click on the next slide. Yeah. I think everybody heard that uh, microfocus bought Guava in October. This was a really important news for everybody. Um, I think on the next, next slide we can also say that we are happy about this news. Um, I think especially for, for Retain and our Hupa solutions, this is really good because uh, we now, uh, or now we can work directly with the Hupa's developers. We have um, a lot of new colleagues um, with technical know-how, with sales know-how, and so um, this are really good news for us. Um, we have offices in Canada, USA. US, Germany, Great Britain, also um, Australia, for example. So um, I think we have a good position for good business in the next years. Um, for Guava EMEA, especially for Guava EMEA, Guava partners are always important. We have round about 300 everywhere in the world, especially in Europe. And with these um, important um, partners, we are working for Round about 4,000 customers and more, and over in more than 60 countries. Before um, my colleague Geert will show you um, Retain, I will explain you a little bit about our portfolio. We have a lot of different solutions, and let's have a look on it. First, we see Guava. I think it is, um, yeah, it, it was our first product. Guava, groupwise, antivirus, and anti-spam. So um, it is an antivirus, anti-spam solutions. If you are working in this case hard, then you can also use um, WASP, for, ex for example, for the web access, and Guava for GMS. We have also Reload. Reload is our backup and disaster recovery solution. And for Reload, we have another product. It is Blueprint. With Blueprint, um, you can see some details about your backup, and you can analyze it. Another new solution is Reload for Retain. On the end, in the end, we will hear a little bit more about it. Then we have also Vertigo. It's a solution for mailbox management. Um, and the next one is Redline. Redline is a monitoring tool. Last but not least, we have Reveal. With, with Reveal, you can read the mails from your employees. So, I think this was our portfolio. Let's speak a little bit about Retain. Geert, please. Okay, thank you, Guido. Um, yeah, let's have a closer look at uh, Retain and our archiving solution. Um, as you can see on this slide, um, we can archive groupwise. So, the, the product was Original, originally developed for uh, Novel Groupwise to archive all the, the messages from Groupwise into, uh, into one archive. And uh, later on, we added much more to the product. So we created um, yeah, connections to different mail systems. So we added uh, Exchange, Office 365, uh, and Gmail. But we also added different uh, mobility uh, solutions, so we, we can also archive data from mobile devices, and we can archive data um, from social messaging, like Facebook and Twitter, uh, YouTube, and much more. And then all the data will be collected into one archive, as we can see on the, on the right side. Um, and that's what we call Unified Archiving or Archiving 2.0. So Retain is, uh, as I said, originally developed for Microfocus Groupwise, at that time uh, still called Novel Groupwise, 
Um, and what we can do with Retain is archive all of the data from, from the groupwise environment and store that on one spot in, in one archive. Um, we also offer um, or respect the proxy rights. So if I, for instance, uh, give Guido a right, proxy rights to my groupwise inbox, to my mailbox, then if this um, feature is activated in Retain, he can also um, look into my archive. Then the product also does deduplication. So you probably already know this functionality, single instance storage from Groupwise, because Groupwise does this as well, but on a post office level. Um, if we retain archives from a Groupwise, Groupwise environment, we will do it over the entire system. So we can still reduce the amount of data. And then for the end user, there is a direct search from the Groupwise clients, very easy, um, seamless. He, he's in his Groupwise client, his well-known client, and he can use the, the search feature from the Groupwise client in order to find information in his retained archive. And then um, something yeah, we almost see at every retained project is Groupwise archives. Um, yeah, Groupwise archives are mostly started um, because of the post office is getting too large and then uh, the admins would like to reduce the size and then Groupwise archiving is then sometimes a quick solution um, for that. Um, but if you start with a retained archiving solution, you would like to get rid of those local archives which are spread around, around the place. They are on, on the file server, they may be on some desktops, maybe on laptops, and uh, you would like to consolidate this data into one archive. Um, yeah, we'll talk about the Groupwise archives in a bit. The retained architecture looks like, uh, like this picture. On the left side you see three Groupwise servers so um, each of them is uh, running a Groupwise post office. SOAP is enabled, so the retained worker, which is a part of the software, can connect to the SOAP interface uh, in order to collect the messages from the, the Groupwise server. And in order to get our single instance, uh, the retained worker is creating hash values for each mail and each attachment. Um, he's sending over the hash values to the retained server. And then the server will check if the, this file is already archived, if it's already available in the storage or not. Um, if it's not archived yet, then it will be compressed and sent over to the retained server. If it's uh, already on the storage, then um, the retained server will just create new entries in the database and uh, point new references to the existing file in the storage. And that's basically how our single instance storage in Retain works. So let's go to the, to the center of the picture. We have the Retain server. Um, the server needs to be connected to a kind of database server. Could be uh, Microsoft SQL, could be MySQL, Postgres or Oracle. And um, within the database we store the metadata of the messages but not the message or the attachment itself, because these are stores in the storage. So besides being connected to a database, we also need to connect the retained server to some kind of storage. You can use a local storage, meaning a local disk on the retained server. It could be um, a partition coming from um, a ZAN device. It could also be special storage devices like EMC, Centera or NetApp. And um, yeah, then on the right side we have the, the user is uh, working on his workstation using the Groupwise client to uh, work on his email and he can just use the plugin to connect to um, his archive or if he wants to search he's just using the search functionality from Groupwise. If this user is uh, a mobile user, so he's um, traveling a lot, 
then he can also uh, take advantage of the Retain mobile app, which is available since Retain 403. Um, we are showing you some screenshots of the app later on in this presentation. So the Retain server can be installed on-prem and then be connected to your GroupWise server. But you could also run Retain uh, in the cloud. We have different offerings for that. Um, so a good possibility if you don't want to add additional servers in your server room. How to start your archiving project? So we have different scenarios, different uh, environments. Uh, let's start with the situation. Um, situation one is the customer doesn't have any archiving uh, solution in place yet. So that's quite easy. We would install Retain, connect Retain to GroupWise and start an initial archiving job. Uh, this job would archive all the data and um, thereafter you would run some incremental daily jobs to uh, archive the, the new incoming emails. So that would be the, the first situation. Then, um, as I already said, uh, quite often we see that customers already have GroupWise archives. Sometimes they, um, they were activated because the users were hitting their um, um, mailbox restrictions and then started to archive and um, yeah, we're storing the data on the, on the local drive, for instance. Um, but there are some problems with the GroupWise archives, which I would like to point out here. So the first problem is mobility. So if you are traveling, um, the GroupWise archives cannot be accessed from externally apart from if it's on your uh, workstation um, or on your, your laptop and you are carrying your arch archive with you. But um, if the GroupWise archive is on the file server, then um, you cannot access it from on the road with your GroupWise client. So that's one problem. Then compliance. Um, a user can just delete messages from the archive, so there's no compliance here. Um, single instance, yeah, the GroupWise server on the post office level does a very nice single instance storage. But if users starts, start to use the GroupWise archives, we are creating copies of the messages and the attachments. So, yeah, in fact, we are um, yeah, ending our single instance storage here and uh, are duplicating data again. And that's something we would like to avoid. And then, um, last problem, data loss. So, suppose the users uh, are um, having the archives, the GroupWise archives on their laptops, then the risk is there that the laptop is being stolen from, from the back seat of the car or uh, from your hotel room, and then you're also losing your archive and we get some business critical information. So this is just a screenshot from a GroupWise archive. It's in fact the GroupWise client um, and if you use the option file open archive you have access to your archive which as I already said it only works if you're connected to the file server that holds the GroupWise archives and uh, yeah at the upper upper left you can see or uh, you can recognize that you're in the archive because in brackets it's uh, mentioning archive. So this is uh, a GroupWise archive. And suppose that we start with retain and we have a, a lot of archives and we would like to know where they are. And for this we, um, we have a nice function, function or feature within uh, our solution Vertigo. And that's the so-called archive pass um, report. So uh, Vertigo has different options. We have a single user mode and a 
multi-user mode. So we are currently in multi-user mode in the screenshot. We've selected all the users from one post office. And then we went to the archive pass uh, tab and clicked on generate. And it's show, showing us now the archive path for all the users from the first post office. So for most of them, everything is just fine. It's uh, pointing to um, a Linux storage, so all in the same spot, easy to get them um, with our migration tool and s migrate them into Retain. But some of them, like the user Harry Modal and Mike Meyer, they have it somewhere locally. Yeah. It's on C archive or on D, D, uh, GW archive. So um, either we need to copy or move the data to a central storage and grab it from there, or we install our migration tool on the workstation and let it migrate the data into, um, into Retain in order to consolidate the data. So Vertigo can be felt very helpful in such uh, a project. And if we know where the archives are by using the, the Vertigo report, then we can use the next tool, that's the GroupWise Personal Archive Migration Utility. And this tool can then be pointed to the GroupWise archives, um, and then it will start migrating the data, the messages, into Retain. And um, if the job is done, um, you can check the messages in the user's archives in Retain, and thereafter you could also decide to delete these GroupWise archives. So we spoke about um, option one, no archiving solution in place yet, about the, the local GroupWise archives, and um, then Another option would be a customer already has an archiving solution. Uh, for that, we have different options to migrate existing data out of existing archiving solutions into Retain. Um, one of them would be um, if the customer is currently on a N plus or NetMail solution, we have a migration utility for that. We point this tool to the archives on disk, and then it will start migrating the data into uh, the retained server. And then thereafter you can connect it um, to GroupWise, and, or, and, yeah, and it will start archiving the new data from GroupWise as well. So now I would like to switch over to um, a short demo on Retain. So we should see a desktop. Um, this virtual machine has a GroupWise client. <coughs> so let's have a closer look at the different options from the user's perspective. So the user has his GroupWise client and is looking for some older email. Well, he can use the, the GroupWise search functionality. And um, here at the right side, we see Fred Nurk, that's my demo user, Fred Nurk Home. So the search functionality is searching over uh, the mailbox on the GroupWise post office. But I can also activate the check for Fred Nurk external archive. This option shows up as soon as I connect um, my retained server to the GroupWise post office. So now I can start and type a keyword on the right, uh, on the left side here. And I should specify a time frame because by default this client is searching uh, only in the last 12 months. So I'm changing the, the start date and hit OK. It's coming back with results. Um, part of the results, the first. 37 items are coming from the live GroupWise system. And then there's a, a second section over here, Fred Nerf External Archive, with uh, 57 items. So these are coming from the retained server. You see the um, 
The icon on the left side is a bit different, and that means these are stubs. These are links that, which are pointing to the retained server. But I can still just double click on the message, read the message, and if I want, I can process the message, start to reply to it, and work with it as uh, if it would be a normal message. So very convenient for the end user because it's just like working in the Groupwise client. So that's the first option for the user. The second one is using the Groupwise uh, plugin, the retain plugin for the Groupwise client. So we see open retain archive as an additional button in, um, in Groupwise. I hit the button and it will lock me in automatically with a single sign-on and um, I can start browsing on the left side. Yeah, you, can, you will see your cabinet with all the folders and uh, the messages. But we can also use a very nice search feature. Uh, the search has been very much improved since Retain 4 and uh, we can just start typing like we do uh, with Google, for instance, and it will come up with some suggestions. Uh, I'm checking or selecting one of these suggestions, and you can also see that in the list on the right side, um, these are highlighted. Yeah? These are all um, messages containing somehow VMware or VMware team. Um, if I ex if I know for, for sure that it's um, my search word is somewhere in the sender or in the attachment, I can use the, the filters on the left side. And from here, I can also just open the message, uh, have a look at it, have a look at um, attachments if they are available. They can be downloaded from here. We can have a look at uh, the details, like the path. Yeah, it was in the inbox at the time we archived this message and all the details about this particular message. Now, what else can the user do from within the web UI? Well, um, we just spoke about having um, proxy rights and uh, respect the proxy rights which are set up in, in the group client. clients. Well, if I would like to have Guido accessing my mail, then um, that can be done with the proxy rights, but there could still be some messages that are confidential, and I could mark them here and hit the confidential button, and then these messages are not uh, visible for my colleagues. Now we can forward messages, we can export messages. If we choose a couple of messages from, from the archive, then we can click on export. And in the background, Retain is now generating one single PDF container. And this is showing up under the exported items tab. And you can see 6th of December. And we can open this PDF file. And you can see we just selected three items. And these are those three emails, including the attachments, including um, graphics and so on. So this is very helpful if you would like to um, forward a couple of messages from the archive to, let's say, an auditor or um, uh, a lawyer, for instance. So. If I'm in my mailbox um, and if I have the rights to switch to um, other mailboxes because of the proxy rights or uh, manual set rights to, to an archive of a former employee, for instance, then we can just search and now it's showing me um, only the mailboxes or the archives to which I have rights to. Yeah, so, um, I'm Fred Nurk and I have access to Joseph's mailbox. Let's see if there's something in there. Probably the messages are a bit older. Yeah. So this is these are messages from uh, Joseph. And um, 
So I can switch between mailboxes by using the change mailbox functionality. Yeah, this is um, basically the, the, the user's interface. Um, there's an, another option for a user, and that's if you um, if your users are using the group-wise web access or the microfocus uh, web access, then um, there is an, there's a possibility to install a plugin for the, the web access. And what this is doing, you have your default uh, options in the web access, like mailbox, calendar, contacts, and documents. And after we install the, the web access plugin, we will also have a retain tab. If the user clicks on retain tab, then within web access, uh, we are showing the user the retain uh, archive. So just like we saw it um, a minute ago, the user can access this archive, forward messages, export messages, and so on. So very convenient for um, Groupwise Web Access users. So these were the different options for, for the end user. So now I would like to have a quick look um, at the administration interface. So I'm logging in as an admin. After the installation of Retain, the first thing you would like to set up is the, yeah, the connection to Groupwise. So we have a, the so-called module configuration. My demo environment is connected to three different mail systems. But let's have a, have a closer look at Groupwise. Um, the thing you have to set up is the, um, the SOAP tab. So first of all, we need a trusted application key. This should be created in the, the Groupwise um, web admin. So that's the, 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 yeah, the basic functionality we need. Um, this is a requirement. And this gives, gives retain access to all mailboxes within the Groupwise environment. Um, so you generate it on, on the back end of Groupwise, and then you need to enter the, the name of the key plus the key itself. In, within the retain module configuration, and additionally, the uh, IP address of one of the post offices. And uh, of course, the SOAP port, with or without SSL, that can be configured here. And um, that's basically it. So this is the configuration you need to connect retain to groupwise. Um, one thing that's maybe interesting, uh, we spoke about uh, respecting groupwise proxy rights. Well, this is exactly the, the, the space or the, the, the place where you can activate this. So you can see it's activated. So um, retain is respecting the proxy rights within groupwise. So the connection between retain and, and groupwise is is there. It's, it's completed. What you need then is um, a schedule, so the time frame at which day and which time is retain running a job. And um, so we can have different schedules, as you can see here. And then we have a profile or even multiple profiles, maybe for the different post offices or for different, different departments. And the profile is um, the configuration piece that tells you what should be archived. Within the profile, you can also specify that messages are deleted from Groupwise. Um, of course, only messages that have been archived can be deleted from Groupwise. Um, so if I would check this box, it would delete messages that are older than 365 days from, from the Groupwise system. Yeah, to reduce the size of the post office. Message settings, this would be the tab where you can specify what should be archived. Are we interested in only in the mailboxes or also in resources like uh, meeting rooms and cars and so on? Are we interested in all the item types, mail, 
um, appointments, notes, tasks, and so on. So you can exactly specify what should be archived. Scope is about the time frame for the first job. So the initial archiving job, you would just archive everything. Um, but later on, you're running initial jobs, and then it's uh, very, uh, very good and very uh, fast to make advantage of the retention flag. So um, once we archived uh, messages, we put a retention flag on the Groupwise database on the last um, archived message so that we know yeah, where we have to start or when we start, uh, when we kick off the next um, um, archiving job. So this would be the, the reference for the next job. And um, so if you use this option, it's much, much faster as going through the entire group-wise system each time. That's the profile. The worker is just uh, that piece of software that's connecting to um, the SOAP interface. And then you're creating a job and putting together a schedule, a profile, and a worker. And uh, you can just choose them here from the list, put them together, and uh, then assign mailboxes to the job. You can choose uh, the entire mail server. So the server has two post offices, or this environment has two post offices. I can choose the entire post office or I can make advantage of distribution lists. Um, if I'm using distribution lists, like one per department, I can choose to only archive a specific list, like, for instance, the IT department, which could be very um, yeah, convenient in case of a proof of concept, where you just want to start testing the software and, and run it against one one distribution list. So I just saw that it's not showing any distribution lists. The reason for that could be that it has been a while since it updated the address book. And as you see here, now I can choose the different um, departments or distribution lists. I can either um, go by user, so choose to archive only a specific user or make a combination out of server, uh, distribution list, and users. So I could pick the entire post office, but exclude specific users from the address book. Yeah, because I don't want to archive uh, maybe the utility mailbox from the IT help desk department because it only um, holds a lot of emails from the firewall and from the different devices, which I uh, decided not to archive. So then you can exclude such a mailbox. So now it's archiving post office one without the mailbox meeting two. So this makes it very, yeah, uh, flexible, you can um, have jobs for departments, for um, user groups, uh, whatsoever. Yeah, this is in, um, in a short uh, overview what, um, what's available on the admin side. Of course, there's much more like database connectivity, indexing, and so on. But I think this already gives you a, quite a good idea about uh, the possibilities. So let's log out from here. And move on to the next slide. So, um, yeah, we spoke already about uh, the availability of a retain app. So <coughs> this app can be installed from the the stores for iOS and Android. The first time you have to specify your login credentials, which are basically your group files login credentials, plus pointing it to the retained server. And then it will show you the different accounts. So 
if I have proxy rights to some colleagues, they will show up here as well. And then the third screenshot is one of my, my inbox, so I can see all the emails plus the attachments. And if I open one of them, you will see the email, the content, and uh, this one also has a PDF attachment, so I could double click on the attachment and it would be opened. So that's very convenient for all the, the mobile users. They can access their archive from wherever they are. So we spoke a lot about retain and consolidating all the data from GroupWise archives, put everything in one central place. Um, but then this retained server becomes also yeah, very important and business critical. So you don't want to lose the data there. Yeah? So it makes sense to create backups of the retained server. Um, for that we created a quite new product which is called Reload for Retain. And um, this product is yeah, special, especially created for Retain. Um, so we, we exactly know um, how the system is designed. So we know it has a database, it has uh, lots of files, and it has the index. So these three pieces are being backed up by the solution. Because um, yeah, if you lose one of them, then the archive is not complete. If you're losing the database, then you have a lot of files, but there's no relationship. Um, so you have orphan files. If you, <clears throat> if you lose the archive files, but still have the database, then you have the metadata of the, the messages, but if you click on one of the messages, it will not get the file from this because it lost the archive files. Um, the index is, would be a minor problem. If the index is lost, you can still run a re-index in order to get um, the search functionality back up and running. Now, reload for retain, as I said, makes advantage of um, yeah, being connected directly to retain um, instead of searching over the file system for uh, new archived files because that would be the way for a normal backup solution. Uh, retain will query, um, or reload for retain would query the retain server and ask for what has been changed, which files has been archived since the last job. And then it will um, get a, an XML file, a manifest file, which is a, a very nice list of all the new files on the, the retain server. So we can just uh, take this manifest file in order to create backups of the files. So very good and um, well integrated solution to get um, backups of your retained server. Oh, okay. we'd like to switch back to Guido. Thank you, Giet. Um, questions. If you have any questions, please write it in the chat. Giet will focus on it in some minutes. Before we will speak about questions, some more information about sales. Um, we are not stupid. We know that a lot of GroupWise customers are using other solutions for their mail system, for antivirus, anti-spam, for archiving, whatever. If you have another solution and you are interested in Guava or Retain, for example, then we have yeah, I think a good campaign for you. In the next days, you will get a mail from us. And um, if you say, OK, for example, I have a solution from NetMail, for, for example, and uh, I have maintenance for the next year, then we will say, OK, um, we, will, we, we will present you the same. Um, you must only pay the maintenance for one year, and you will get it for two years, for example. So it's really interesting. If you have another solution, please let us know, contact us, and we will give you a good offer that you can change from the other solutions to Guava. Now, the next slide. Um, I think this is also interesting. 
because um, it's always the same questions. Um, what is about trainings? Um, we are we will focus on retain, for example, or on guava, but we need a little bit more knowledge. We will do a training next year in February in Munich. It's nearly the airport. It's a Durinto Airport Hotel. And we will speak there one day about Guava 7. Guava 7 is a really new Guava solution. Um, it's, we have new features there. We have yeah, new things for admins, for example. So uh, it makes sense to have a look on it. And we will also speak about retain. So if it's interesting, please let us know. I think today you will see on our website that, uh, yeah, the, the training and the agenda, for example. Please click on it. It would be wonderful to see you in Munich. Yeah, maybe I can add that the, uh, the retain training, training will, be, will be focusing on uh, retain for groupwise. And uh, both trainings will be hands-on labs, so you will be installing the software uh, by yourself um, and guided by some, some uh, documents and um, yeah, I think it will be a, um, two very, very good days of, of training. Yes. We also know that uh, a lot of MicroFocus customers are using Exchange or Office 365, for example. Um, if you have another solution than GroupWise, it will be no problem, um, especially Guava and Retain. Um, um, you can also use um, with other mail systems than group wise. Okay, now let's have a look on questions. Do you have any questions? Do you need more information? Please let us know, Gerd. I'm looking at the question list, but it's uh, empty. It is empty. Okay, I think this is a good sign. Hmm. So we can say thank you to everybody and uh, hope that you will have now a wonderful Christmas time. Um, I think, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a cold December, so enjoy it and hope to see you on the MicroFocus tour, for example, now. I think tomorrow it will start in Zurich uh, and next uh, week in Vienna. So perhaps we can see you there. We wish you a wonderful week. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. -bye. Bye.